This video will look at creating exponential trend lines in Excel. So an exponential regression or trend line or line of best fit, all of those words mean the same thing, is um, an exponential function that goes through some data points as well as it can. So like we saw in the linear function, um, sometimes dots don't form a perfectly straight line, but they very much look like a linear trend. The same thing happens with exponential functions. Sometimes our dots will not form a perfect exponential relationship, but they do come pretty close. So we still want to use an exponential function to model them. So let's look at some examples of what we can do with this. So the table below shows the number of new stores in a coffee shop chain that opened during the years 1986 through 1994. Create the exponential model showing the number of shops S that opened in years, since, years Y since 1985. So this is really important. It's telling us to count our years since 1985. So I'm going to insert a column in here and call it years since 1985. And what this does, especially for exponential functions, is it makes our initial value a much better number to work with. If you did not change it to years since 1985 when you did this problem, um, it's it, it, your initial value would be some really weird number. Usually it's either way too big or way too small, and it throws students off because it's a weird number. Uh, most exponential functions that are looking at years will have you re-index. That's what we call when we're changing how we're counting the years to make that initial value a better number to work with. So in this case, years since 1985, um, 1986 is one year later, so we're going to use that as year one. 1987 is two years later, so it'll be year two and so on. So 1990 is five years since 1985. And we'll just go down the list. So instead of using numbers that are almost 2,000, which are really big, now we're using one through nine, which is much smaller and easier for us to work with. So to get our exponential trend line, I'm going to highlight my data and then insert a scatter plot. See, it has a nice exponential looking shape. I'm going to change it to layout one. So I can put my years since 1985. This is the number of new shops. And this is looking at the coffee shops. So we can see it looks exponential. It's got a curve shape. In this case, it's exponential growth because it's curving upwards. To get our regression line or our trend line, we right click and then add trend line. This time we want to check the exponential box and then display equation, display R squared. So we see our R squared value is 0.99. That's really good. That's really close to one. And we can see that our line almost goes through all of the points. So that's looking really good. And then looking at our model, our initial value is 10.59. So it looks like we started with about 10 and a half coffee shops. So it might have been 10, it might have been 11, but our model is putting it at 10.5. And then now we have this number E. E is a specific number in math. It's 2.71828 something or another. It's like pi. It's irrational and it goes on forever. So Excel always works in E to a power form when it comes up with exponential functions. And we typically work in the one plus or minus R form. So we are going to have to convert from this E into the standard form that we're used to working with. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So again, um, let me just get some space so we can work here. So the way Excel has it, let's see, we're using S. So it says that the number of shops is equal to 10.596 times E raised to the 0.4614, and then it would be Y for years. So that's how Excel has it. We need to get rid of the E. So in Excel, the way we get the number E is with the exp function. So if we do exp and then put a number in there, that's going to be the same thing as e raised to a power. And one thing that's confusing for students is this exp function does not involve a caret. It does not have that raised to, but Excel knows that's what we're actually trying to do. So if we put in exp of 0.4614, close parenthesis, that's going to evaluate e raised to the 0.4614. So I'm doing exp parenthesis 0.4614, and that gives me 
five, eight, six, three. I've just rounded to four decimal places. So we could rewrite our equation to be S is equal to our same initial value, which is 10.596 times, and that E to a power is now 1.5863. Would you not agree that's a little bit easier? And then raised to the Y. So that's how we get rid of the E. We did EXP of that number inside, and that converted it into a number that looks better and is more familiar to us. And if we wanted, we could even rewrite this as S is equal to 10.596 times. We could even write this as 1 plus 0.5863 to the Y. And the reason I did that is that shows us that now we're increasing by 0.5863, which is a 58.63% growth. So in this case, we're increasing the number of shops each year by 58.63%. So that is our percent increase that the second part of the problem asked for. So again, Excel gave it to us an E to a number. To get rid of that, we do that EXP function of whatever number is inside. And that leaves us with our initial value times 1.5863, which I just split up to be 1 plus 0.5863, so we can see that we had that 58.63% growth. And then if we want to know how many coffee shops will there be in the year 2000, we can just plug in um, 2000 in for the equation, but we have to be careful because we didn't actually use the year 2000, we used year since. So if you think about it, if somebody was born in 1985, in 2000 they would be 15 years old, and that's actually what we need to put in the equation. So we need to put in 10.596 times parenthesis 1 plus 0.5863 raised to the 15 because 2000 is 15 years since 1985. So in the year 2000, there would have been 10,737.96 new coffee shops opening. Okay, let's look at another example. So a cup of soup is left on a countertop to cool. The table below gives the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of the soup recorded over a 10 minute period. Create the exponential regression equation that shows the temperature of the soup T after M minutes. By what percent is the soup cooling each minute? And then how hot will the soup be after 20 minutes? Okay. So we're gonna highlight our data, insert our scatter plot, and this one almost looks linear-ish, but the problem told us to do exponential, so we're going to do that. So we're going to, actually before we do that, let's change our layout so we can look at the minutes. And this is degrees or temp in Fahrenheit. Maybe call it cooling. Again, I don't really care what you title and label as long as you put something there. And then I always click and hit delete on that series one because we really don't need it. It makes our graph look better. All right, so to get our exponential equation, we right-click. We add trend line, we want exponential, display equation, display R squared. So our R squared value is 0.9879, that's really close to one, that's really good. So that looks nice. Um, so looking at our equation, it tells us our initial value is about 180 degrees. And we've got this E thing again, so we're going to have to convert it just like we did in the last video. So just writing it as it is, it's telling us our temperature is equal to 180.38 E raised to the negative 0.047 M, since our soup is cooling based on how many minutes it's been out. To get rid of that E, we have to use the EXP function in Excel. So we do equals EXP of negative 0.047. So this function, our temperature is equal to 180.38 times 0.9541 raised to the m. And if you notice for exponential, I'm using more decimal places. Um, it's a lot more precise to use more decimal places for exponential. So if Excel gives you more decimal places, try to use up to four. Uh, for linear, it doesn't really make a difference if you use two versus four, but for exponential, it tends to do better the more decimal places you use. So we've got 180.38, which is our initial value, times 0.9541 raised to the m. So we got rid of that e, again, by using that exp function in Excel. 
So we want to know how much is it cooling? What percentage is it cooling? We see this 0.9541 number, that's less than one, which tells us we're going down by a percentage. So we've got to figure out what percentage are we decreasing by? What is that decay rate that would give us 0.9541? I'm trying to figure out what is that rate that we're going down by that would give us the 0.94. 9541. So if we solve for R, um, let's see, we can say that negative R is equal to um, 0 0.9541 minus 1. We subtract 1 from both sides. Excel is trying to be helpful. I don't actually want it to do anything for me. It just So we want to subtract 1 from both sides, which if we did that, let's see, what is 0.9541 minus 1. So that would tell us that negative R is equal to negative 0 0.0459. So if we got rid of the negative from both sides, we see that our decay rate is 0 0.0459. So we're going down by 4.59% each minute. So in this case, our decay is 4.59%. So again, just walking through that, we said that 0.95, that's a number less than one, which means we're losing. Um, before we had one point, what was it? Um, 1.5, which meant we were gaining each time. It was bigger than one, but since we're less than one at 0.95, we're losing. So we said, well, what number are we going down by that would get us to the 0.95? So we said one minus R is equal to 0.9541. So we solved this equation for R. So we subtracted one from both sides to get negative R is equal to negative 0 0.0459. And then we took the negative sign away from both sides. You could think of that as multiplying both sides by negative one to get the R is equal to 0 0.0459. So our decay rate in this problem is 4.59%. Okay. And then if we wanted to know, actually, before I do that, so if you wanted to rewrite the equation in the form we're used to seeing it, you could say that T is equal to 180.38 times 1 minus 0 0.0459 to the M, capturing that we're going down by 4.59% each time. So then if we want to know how hot is the soup after 20 minutes, we can put 20 minutes in for M. So we do equals 180.38 times parenthesis 1 minus 0 0.0459 raised to the 20. To see that our soup is going to be about 70.48 degrees after 20 minutes.